Hello and welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. We are continuing our series on power pivot. So this is video number two for our series on how to control power pivot through VBA. In our last video, we saw how to add a connection to a power pivot model, which would then upload a table into it. And then we explored a little bit more and we added a measure to our table. So basically like an aggregation that summarizes some kind of column of information usually. Um, so, you know, if we want to do like the total sales or the average sales, um, we could create a measure that would do that. Uh, in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually upload a second table and then we're going to create a relationship between those two tables. So the idea with the relationship is that I can connect related tables and then what I can then do is pull in information from one table into the other table so that way I can kind of uh, summarize data in a different fashion. So it allows us to kind of approach uh, data building in this kind of like block formation so I can take different columns and assemble them to build the data set that I need. So with that being said, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump in my VBA editor and then from there, we're gonna import a new table. That new table being this price table. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna import this one. Oops, guess I got an update notice. At least it's updated, can't complain. Um, so the goal is to import this price table and then create a relationship based on the item column for each table. So I wanna create a relationship based on the item column. So let's jump in VBA. Okay, so as you can tell, I already have a subroutine made. I have some code in here already. Basically what this is, is I'm taking the last code in our previous video, and I'm simply gonna reuse it, but this time I'm now going to insert the price data set. So if this code is looking a little confusing to you and you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? please watch the previous video. I go over how to write this code in the previous video. It's very important that you know how to write this code or else you can't import data into your data model. So I'm gonna uncomment this section of data. And the first thing that I did is I just simply changed the name of it. It was sales data set, now it's price data set. I changed the description. So now I'm saying, hey, this is all the price data. I kept my connection string the same because the table exists in the same workbook. However, I did change my command text. On my previous one, I had sales data. It's no longer pulling from the sales data table. It's pulling from the price data table. And then from here, I still kept this the same, so it's still a command Excel. And then I still said add it to the model and then I kept the relationships. Now there's no relationships that are predefined, so there was nothing to import in this example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this again. Okay, so I ran it. Doesn't give you any feedback to tell if it was like, successful or not, but let's double check and see if it got imported. So I'm gonna jump back into my VBA workbook. I'm gonna go to my Power Pivot tab, my Manage Data Model. And then if I look down here at the bottom, I see a Sales Data Table and then my newly imported price data table. And then if I want, I can simply select each column and learn a little bit more about that column. So the data type, the format, and things along that nature. So it did exactly what we needed to do. So I'm gonna minimize the data model. I'm gonna go back into my VBA editor. I'm gonna comment this out because I don't want it to run again. It's done its job, it's imported the data, so I'm good to go. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start writing my script to create my relationship. So the first thing that we're gonna do, like most other vi videos, we're gonna declare our variables. So we're gonna declare our variables. The first one is gonna reference the power pivot model itself, and I just always call it my model. And then this one is gonna be a model object. So the model object is power pivot. And then from here, what I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need to have individual tables that I can reference inside my script. So I need multiple table or table objects or more specifically model table objects that I can reference. And so this one is gonna hold two different variables. It's gonna be model table one 
and then model table two. And then this one is going to be a model table object. So these are tables with inside the power pivot model. And then from here, I'm going to want to get individual columns from those tables. And so I want to be able to store those columns in object variables themselves. So I'm going to declare two more variables. The first one is going to be called the primary column. I'm going to keep it prim call for short. And then the other one is going to be the foreign column. And so for these ones, these are going to be model table column objects. So individual columns within a power pivot data table. And then there's two more variables that I have to declare. The first one is going to reference all the relationships in my model. If I'm talking about all the relationships, I'm talking about the model relationships collection. So all the relationships in my model. And I'm going to keep this one simple. I'm just going to call it model relationships. And it's going to be a model relationships collection object. And then there's one final variable. That is going to be called model relationship. And this is simply a re single re model relationship in my power pivot model. So with that being said, we've now declared all of our variables, which is great. From here, I need to create a reference to the power pivot model itself. So we're going to create a reference to the power pivot model. And I'm going to set my model object equal to this workbook. So the workbook that houses this code. And I'm going to call the model property. And this will basically go out and fetch the model for me. And then I'm going to store it in this variable called my model. So now if I want to reference anything that belongs to the power pivot model, I just simply have to call my model. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to reference the two tables that I need to build the relationships. And so really what I'm doing is I want to create a reference to the price data table and then the sales data table. So I want to treat them as objects objects that I can play with and call the properties and methods of them. And then I'm going to reference individual columns in these tables. So the item ones. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump back into VBA and I'm going to create a reference to the tables I need to create the relationships or the relationship. There's only one. And so I'm going to set model table one that is going to be equal to my model. So I'm going to go into the power pivot model. There's a collection called model tables. This contains all the model tables. And if I want to get an individual table, I'm going to call the item method. And I can either pass through the index or the name of this particular table. Well, in this one, we'll have model table one be the sales data table. And if you ever need to make sure about the name, you go back into Power Pivot. If you look right down here, this is sales data. And then what I'm doing is I'm simply going to copy this one because it's almost identical. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to change this to two. And then this one is going to be the price data. So we got sales data and price data. And then from here, I now need to get the individual columns from each table to create my relationships. So we'll say create a reference to the columns needed for the relationship. And it's very similar to what we were doing up above. And so we're going to set the primary column. We can think of the primary column as the table that houses the unique IDs for that relationship. I'll kind of explain a little bit and I'll show you a visual of kind of how we can think about it. But in this example, it's going to come from model table two, and then it's going to be the model table columns collection. And then again, there's an item method where I can simply pass through the name of that column. And then from here, I'm going to copy this over and this one's now going to be foreign column. And then this one is going to be model table one. However, it's still the item column that we want. So 
Again, kind of to explain this, we have a primary column and a foreign column. The way I like to think about it, at least for me, the foreign column is where the data is going. So it's going somewhere that's kind of foreign to it. It doesn't know where it's going. It's going somewhere else, somewhere it's not familiar with. The primary column is where that data lives. So if you look here, I want to send this information over to the sales data table. So it's going somewhere else. So this is my primary column then. And then this is the table it's going to. So this is my foreign column. That's where that information's going. Hopefully that makes sense. That's how I like to think about it. I know some people think of it differently, but that's kind of how at least I built that model in my head. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can finally add a relationship to this particular uh, data model. So we're gonna now add a new relationship to this model. And so we're gonna say, go into my model. We're gonna go into the model relationships collection and we're gonna call the add method. And then there's a couple parameters that we gotta pass through. The for first one is gonna be the foreign key Gotta make sure I spell it right because I sometimes misspell that one for some reason. And there's gonna be a foreign column key and that's equal to the foreign column. If you look down here below, it'll say as model table column. That means this parameter is expecting a model table column object. It's very important to keep that in mind. Primary key column is going to equal the primary column. And then with that, that's all we need to build this relationship. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna delete that because I don't need it. And there we go. We now have all the information we need to build this particular relationship. So if I run it, it ran the code. Again, there's no feedback to us, but I assure you it ran. I'm gonna comment this out. I'll explain why later. I'm gonna jump back into Power Pivot. And if you ever wanna see your relationships, there's a lot of different ways to, to kind of view it. If you go into your diagram view, if I move this table over here, this little line right here represents the relationship. So if I select it, it will tell me, hey, this is the two columns that it is uh, basically building that relationship off of. And then I think if you double click it, it brings up and will actually allow you to edit this relationship if you want to, and it will tell you if it's active or not. Now there's other ways to see it as well. If you go over to design, the design tab, and you go to manage relationships, you'll see right here, this is currently a relationship that we have. And it does tell us the type of relationship this is. So it's a many to one. Um, and then it's telling us table two and table one, and then the columns from each table. Again, you can edit it, you can delete it, you can create a new one if you so choose. Okay, so now that we've made this relationship, let's kind of just explore that collection of all of our relationships. Now, in this example, it doesn't really make sense to use the collection because we only have one, but again, just for example purposes, let's just do it anyway. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a reference to the model relationships collection. So we're gonna create a reference to the model relationships collection. And so we're gonna set that model relates variable equal to my model. And then we're gonna go into the model relationships collection. So now we've basically accessed all the relationships in our model, be it there's only one. But from here, if we wanted to, we can now loop through all of these relationships. So we're gonna loop through each relationship. And so I'm gonna say for each model relationship in my model relationships collection, go to the next one. And then from here, I can always just print out some basic information about it. So if I say model relationships, I can say, hey, is it active or not? And then I'll put debug.print in front of it. So this will print it in the immediate window. I'm gonna copy this one. I'm just gonna put it down a couple times and see what we can print out about it. So we'll put that one down and that one down. If I press Control J, it will bring up IntelliSense. I can see the application. 
And then if I wanted to, I could do the foreign key column. Now, if I run it as is, it will return an error. But if I put period, it will now bring up the properties that are associated with a model table column object. And so I can now say, hey, what's the data type? And then on the other one, what I'll do is I'll change it from the foreign column to the primary key column. So if I press Control J, I'll go to the primary key column. And then if I want to, I will say, hey, what's the name of that? So if I run this now, hopefully no errors, you never know. But as you can tell, it said true Microsoft Excel 130. Again, it's enumeration. So um, if you go on the documentation, it'll explain what it is and then it will tell us the column name. So now that we've done that, let's just put a couple more just for, you know, fun sakes. Okay, and we'll say foreign key table. And we'll say, hey, what's the record count in that table? Because we're really curious. And then we'll put the primary key table. And then I'm really concerned with the, I don't know, the name. We'll just keep it the same. Okay, so if I run it again, it's price data item. Uh, and looks like this is the record count. If I, uh, let me just, delete it and run it again. Okay, so true Microsoft Excel 130 data type. Column name is item. That's our record count and that's the name of the primary key table. Okay, so that does it for today's video. If you have any questions about how to build relationships in Power Pivot or you know just kind of how to examine them, please put those comments or questions down in the comments below. Uh, I know sometimes this is new. I mean, I'm sure for a lot of people this is new. The documentation on Power Pivot, while it's been updated, I don't think it was advertised very well, it seems like, because everywhere I go, no one seems to be talking about it. But this does seem to be a nice, easy way to at least easily interact with the Power Pivot model. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we appreciate the support. We want to make sure other people can find the videos. And so when you like it, it obviously kind of makes it a little bit easier for other people to find. And then also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So we're obviously gonna continue our Power Pivot model uh, exploration, but we're also exploring Python a little bit more in depth. And so we're kind of seeing how we can use the Office applications along with our Python modules. And so I've got some pretty interesting stuff there uh, one of the videos I'm going to be doing is about how we can actually use pandas in real time in our Excel workbook. So it's very cool. I think you guys will like that one a lot, especially you panda people out there. So thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.